What's up, everyone? Welcome to This Day in Philly Sports History for January 20th, 2023. Quick housekeeping update. There is a new episode to Back to the Future. Take a look at the history of Andy Reid's uh, five NFC Championship games with the Eagles, why he came up short most times, and throughout the process kind of came up with a couple ideas that didn't even think about. So be sure to check that out, Back to the Future with a PH, wherever you get your podcast. YouTube video has also been posted. Well, Flyers actually finally had a good loss last night. They lost 4-1 to to the Blackhawks at the Wells Fargo Center. And, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a good loss because the Blackhawks are behind them in the standings. So there's still some ways to go, but hopefully this is the start of a long losing streak. Um, and yeah, I know it's crazy that we, we think about that, and or the Flyers in terms of that, but hey, that's that's the way it goes. Good win for the Sixers. They're now 4-0 and on that West Coast swing. They beat the Blazers 105-95 last night. Uh, Joe had his usual 30-plus points. Uh, James had a triple-double. They've won now 17 of their last 21 games. They're officially tied for the second spot in the Eastern Conference. I, with uh, Milwaukee, Boston has been hot lately too, winning eight straight. So it definitely, they're playing well at the right time. They're turning it on right now. And the top half of the Eastern Conference just, it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. And I, <clears throat> I really do get super excited about the Sixers when they're good. Uh, I'll get more into that later in this episode. But when the Sixers are good and, and going on runs, it's definitely a lot of fun. But quick Eagles injury update and getting everything ready for tomorrow. Um, Lane Johnson should be ready to go. He was a full participant in practice. I did see Avante Maddox was practicing yesterday or at least working out with the team. He has been officially ruled out. So the only person heading into this game with uh, an injury designation is Maddox. So... They're about as healthy as they could be, I would say, at this stage of the season. So that bodes well for for the six or for the Sixers for the Eagles. Um, the big story yesterday that I saw was, um, and people are like up in arms about it, and it's kind of funny. Uh, Xfinity Live, uh, well, I don't think Xfinity Live is sponsoring it. Uh, a group of Giants fans are coming down, and there's like a couple different trip options where they can come down for the tailgate, they can come down to get tickets and whatever. But they're uh, they rented out space, I guess, in Xfinity Live. Carl Banks is going to be there, and it's kind of funny because everybody's up in arms about it. And to be honest, the past couple times I've been to Xfinity Live. It's been super, super crowded. So if that's where they want it, hopefully they rent it some space that they can do it. Um, and yeah, I just realized, as I said that I sound like an old man, but Hey, I mean, it is what it is. I don't necessarily think Xfinity live is sponsoring it. I think the group rented space in Xfinity Live. So, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, take the giants fans money, send them home unhappy. Um, it's still going to be a miserable, I've done it. I, I came home from the Meadowlands from a temple game one time after they lost miserable. It's not fun. So let them go back up to to New York, North Jersey, wherever they're from. Miserable. Uh, but it, it, it just leads me to believe this week, I think both teams are locked in. And I'll get more into my pick tomorrow. I'm still kind of figuring some things out with which way I want to go. But I think the fact that the two big stories that I've seen so far this week are Nick Sirianni ordering stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut and... The Giants fans running a trip, probably similar to the Green Legion, who I've taken trips with too, but they're running a trip down to Xfinity Live. Those are your two biggest stories. Nothing about the game. It's been very quiet on both fronts, which I feel means both teams are locked in, which I think we're going to see a good game. I'll get more into the handicap and the prediction tomorrow, but there you go. <clears throat> Pizza Gate and Tailgate Gate, inside Tailgate Gate. Either way, I, I mean, this day can't come soon enough. At this point, this has been the longest freaking week ever. Like, I'm I'm ready to go. Like, I, I, if I didn't have to work today, like, I would probably just start walking down 
to to the parking lot now and get there in time. But we have to wait. So, but this day, Philly Sports History, we're going to go back to January 20th, 2000. The Sixers lost to the Hornets 109 to 100 in Charlotte. The game snapped, or the loss snapped a four game winning streak. Um, and the reason I bring this up is uh, well, AI had 35, Tyrone Hill had 17, and George Lynch had 16. But this year, the 99 2000 team was sort of the Sixers' breakout year. They had made the playoffs the year before, uh, but it was like a strike or a lockout shortened season, so they didn't play a full, I think there was only a 50-game uh, stretch. So, I mean, they took advantage of it to their credit, but I feel like this was the real breakout year. It was their second straight year in the playoffs. They lost in the second round to the Pacers, who ended up going to the, um, the NBA Finals that year and lost to the Lakers. But the Hornets, uh, I think that was the year. No, that was the Lakers' second uh, second uh, consecutive title. They did the three-peat the next year against the Sixers. But uh, AI missed the first 12 games of the season with a broken thumb, made his first All-Star game that year. Um, he They were 48 or 49 and 33. They got the fifth seed. But I just remember this is the first time it was fun. And I mentioned earlier just – when the Sixers are good and going like on these playoff runs and trying, the past few years have been amazing. For for somebody who everybody else was getting Eagles starter jackets, people were getting the Charlotte Hornets, you had the Raiders, the White Sox when I was a kid, like the starter jackets. Everybody was getting the colorful ones or or Eagles. And I, I mean, I know people that still have the, the Apex One green pullover, uh, or I guess they were starters, the green pullover starter Eagles jackets. I was the one that had the Sixers. I was the only one. And when I got my Sixers starter, which I still have in the closet back here that I wear all the time when it gets cold enough, it's it's a little snug, but uh, it gets the job done. But, like, they were terrible. That was the Clarence Weather. That was right before they went, started getting good here. It was the Clarence Weatherspoon days and Dana Barrows and uh, Willie Burton and those guys. Um, St- uh, not Stackhouse. Um uh, Sean Bradley, and just they weren't good. So for me, when they're fun, these past few years for the Sixers have been a lot of fun. And that I remember the strike or the lockout year, it was starting to get fun. And this year in particular, I remember being so disappointed that AI was missing the first start to that season. And they obviously got off to a slow start. And I don't think they would have beaten the Pacers, but. Maybe they might have made a little bit more of a run, but I just remember this was when it started to get fun again to watch the Sixers, and then everybody knows what happened the year after. Like They captivated the entire region. So on this day, back in January 20th, the Sixers lost, snapping a four-game winning streak, but wanted to give some love to the 99-2000 Sixers because everybody talks about the 2000-2001, but this is the year that they kind of all started to gel figure it out, put it together. They were still missing a couple pieces from that final run, but like the core was there. So you had Hill, you had AI, you had George Lynch, um, Eric Snow, Aaron McKee. Like those guys were kind of in place. And Theo Ratliff was there. And Theo Ratliff, they they don't win the Eastern Conference that year without Theo Ratliff because Theo Ratliff was the piece they used in the trade to get them to Kembe that kind of put them over the top. But... I'll get more into some Theo Ratliff stuff, I think, in the next few weeks uh, as we approach the trade deadline. But they were 41-14 and 14 with Theo Ratliff the year they went to the finals. So this year, though, in 99-2000 is when they all started to come together. And I remember it was the first time I actually had gone, gone down to CAI. And just a whole lot of fun. Um, hopefully, this is a sign of things to come for this year. Like, like I said, like I Sixers... Obviously, the Eagles are my big love. Phillies were my first love. But the Sixers are like, I, I can't quit them. And I love them when they're good. So on this day, Sixers lost to the Hornets, snapping that four-game winning streak. But more on the Eagles tomorrow. And we got it, – it's it can't come soon enough. Like, I'm, I'm ready to just run through a wall. But hang tight. Be patient for one more day. Go have yourselves a Friday, and until next time, I'll see you when I see you.